Welcome. In the comments on this series, you asked for a dubstep video, and you shall receive a dubstep video. In this video, we'll teach you to make a track like this one. Let's do this. Let's do this. Quickly and without too much hassle. Like with the other genres we've made videos on, there are many sub-genres and different flavors of this type of music. This tutorial will show techniques applicable to all of those, but the focus will be on the deeper, darker side of dubstep, not so much the bright and sparkly side. As always, I've already made the track and curated all the presets and samples I've created and pulled in from FL Cloud. In real time, this took a lot of trial and error, but this video will show a streamlined process so you can focus on what's important. For this one, we're going to start entirely from scratch. Go to File, New from Template, and select Empty. This template only has a single empty sampler channel loaded in the project. Let's start by adding drum sounds. Select multiple items in the FL Studio browser via Control or Command and Shift click and drag them to the spot you want them to appear in. In this case, I want them to show up in the channel rack. Click to add steps, right click to remove them. Let's make our drums blue so we can always tell what's a drum channel and what isn't. Select all channels by clicking and dragging on the channel rack selectors. Then open the channel rack menu on the top left of the channel rack and select color selected. We'll choose the same shade of blue for the start and end of the gradient. And now all channels are blue. Click and drag the right edge of the channel rack to show more steps. I'll quickly add a kick and snare pattern. Then add hi-hats by right-clicking the channel button and selecting fill each four steps. Click here or press K on your computer keyboard to open the graph editor, which lets you set parameters per step, volume, panning, pitch, and others. Let's add some variation to the volumes to make the pattern a little more dynamic. Let's also change some of the volume envelope settings in the sampler. I'm using attack, decay, sustain, and release parameters to give the hi-hat a short fade-in and shorten it a bit overall. I'll add this pattern in the playlist. Color the track blue and call it drums. Right-click it and select auto name clips to apply these settings to the pattern itself too. We're currently in pattern mode. While I can play this pattern, nothing happens in the playlist. If I want to arrange more elements in context, I will need to switch FL Studio to song mode here. You can also press L on your keyboard to achieve the same. Now I'll link these to the mixer so I can add effects. Select all the channels, then select a mixer track and press Ctrl or Command, Shift and L. This will link them all to individual mixer tracks. However, I want all the snares to go to the same mixer track. So from here, I'll change the mixer track destination of two of them to go to the same track. You can do this by hovering over the mixer track destination field here and using your mouse wheel to send the audio to a different track in the mixer. Then I'll reset the tracks I'm not using to default. Select them, right click and select reset to default. Use alt or option and the left and right arrow keys to move the selected tracks to the left or right in the mixer. After that, I'll add the effects I've prepared for them in fast forward because going over effects chains would inflate the length of this video by orders of magnitude. If you're interested in a basic mixing guide, check out our Mixing Basics tutorial series in the card on screen. Then you'll also know why I'm routing the kick and snare mixer tracks into the same mixer track here. Let's paint a couple more instances of this drum pattern in the playlist and start adding accents via reverb and high frequency percussion. 
let's send the snare out to two different tracks by clicking on the routing arrow down here. I'll add these mixer track presets to add the effects. Essentially, both the reverb and delay are set to 100% wet, and their level can be automated via the fruity send at the end of the chain, which is what we'll do now. Right click the mixer tracks and select Assign to new audio tracks. This will make a track for each in the playlist that is linked to the mixer and the automation will show up under there. Then open each Fruity Send and right click the dry knob on Fruity Send and select Create Automation Clip. Let's add some shakers into the mix too, to emphasize the space in between the drum sounds. I'll drag it onto a playlist track header and select Instrument Track here, to automatically link the channel FL Studio creates to a playlist track and mixer track. As with audio tracks, any automation that's added to this channel or mixer track will now show up under this playlist track. I'll normalize the audio here and crop it using the pre-computed effects section in the channel settings. Then I'll high pass it hard as we don't need any low end information from this sound. Bass is next on the list, the most complex topic in any bass music track, but especially in dubstep since it's responsible for so much of the track's feel. We'll start with the sub bass as it's the foundation of everything we'll do on top. Drag it in from the browser. This is just a sine wave with some harmonics on top. So you can still hear it on small speakers. I'll record this into FL Studio quickly. If you're new to FL Studio, when you first click the record button, you'll see this menu before anything happens. You can choose what to record and what to ignore. As you get on with using FL Studio, you'll probably want to turn this dialog off and start recording immediately instead. So choose Don't Show This Again to make sure it doesn't break your flow when you're ready to record. Don't worry, the settings are all still available via right-clicking the record button. You also get some extra settings like Recording Starts Playback, which is enabled for me as you can see here. So FL Studio will automatically start the recording when I press R on my computer keyboard. I have also set it up to give me a pre-count before recording with this button on the toolbar, so I have some time to listen to the metronome and get into the vibe before the recording actually starts. This makes it easier to play the first few notes on time. Cool. Now I'm adding a low mid bass sound that supports the sub bass even further in the upper registers, using almost the same notes as the sub bass. This allows for more control in this crucial area mix wise. If the drop ends up not sounding warm enough, turning this up will solve that. If there is low mid mutt in the sounds that we're going to add later, we can replace that with this sound to clean everything up and keep it tidy. It's an extra step, but all bass music can greatly benefit from doing this. The basic skeleton of the drop exists now, so it's time to think about sidechain compression. Ducking sounds when the drums hit to create more space in the mix. I'll send the kick to an extra track, then the kick and snare to another extra track, and add my sidechain desolator preset to both. This processes incoming audio into clicks that work well with sidechain compression. I'll send the one that only receives the kick to the sub bass as a sidechain, as I don't want it to duck on anything but the kick. Select it in the mixer, then right click the sub bass's routing arrow and select sidechain to this track only. This will only route it to a sidechain input of that track and not put the clicks out to the master on top of the kick. Alternatively, 
press Ctrl or Command and Shift and click the routing arrow to skip the menu. The one with kick and snare in it goes to the low mid bass and every subsequent mid bass I'll add, as I want them to duck on both kick and snare. Sidechain signals are received and used to duck the audio level in Fruity Limiter on both tracks. Here's what that sounds like. Let's also add some keys from FL Cloud here before we add more basses and they don't end up fitting in anymore. Back to basses, I'll add the main sound I've made for this tutorial. A basic 2 to 1 ratio FM modulation excites odd harmonics and fits into this soundscape well. I'll back that up with a noise layer. This is the sound that will start the drop and every 4 bar phrase off. Very distorted and static, but we'll add some filter automation to make it work with the overall quarter note vibe that's going on already. After that, let's add a deep wub to start the second half of 4 bar phrases. And I'll clone it to add variations. Next, we'll want to double the length of our drop and find some way to break up the flow of the main pattern. For that, I'm using a drum fill that I made using an FPC kit. In the second part of the drop, also known as the B part, I'll add some more percussion sounds and dedicated bass sounds that only show up there to contrast what came before it. This is one way to keep bass music that is relatively monotonous by design engaging to listen to. I'll also add a bell sound to the second half of the drop, increasing the complexity just a tiny bit. With the drop itself expanded, we should turn our attention to an intro leading up to the drop. Like in most bass music, in dubstep, the drop is often a stark contrast to the intro before it while retaining some of the same musical ideas. And so, let's move the drop 32 bars to the right. Dubstep, as the name implies, has heavy influences from dub and reggae music, and this is where that will come into play. I'll keep the keys going, and I'll also steal the notes from the sub bass and play them with two GMS presets to showcase the bass notes before the drop happens. That way, you're familiar with them when the drop hits. Next, I'll select a free mixer track, select my bass as an input, and assign it to a new audio track. Then, begin recording a small bass line. Like so. After editing, this is what came out of it. 
Same with my electric guitar. Rinse and repeat. Now the intro is taking shape. I'll add some drums in the second half of the intro, stepping up the complexity once again. These are all sounds from FL Cloud, by the way. I found them by sorting my results with a trending filter active. To add more musical context that drives home the reggae influence, I'll add some brass. Lots of reggae heavily uses horn sections to emphasize melodies, and so these trumpet one-shots from FL Cloud that are pitched to C come in clutch here. I'll play the same thing that I played on my electric bass on them, and add a large chord stab in the middle of the intro as a one-off sound. Nice. Next, we'll need some vocal sounds, Atmos, and sound effects. I'll be honest, I grabbed most of this stuff from FL Cloud without worrying too much about genre or originality. I figured since I already recorded my own bass guitar and electric guitar, there is enough of my own sound in there that my end result won't sound like someone else wrote it. First, we'll grab some Atmos. The kalimba I recorded myself and then ran it through a fruity convolver with a blur pink preset selected. This convolves it with pink noise, making the kalimba sound like a pad and, well, there isn't a better word for it, icy. The rest of the atmosphere sounds and riser elements are just dragged and dropped from FL Cloud Sounds. Same for the vocals. I just typed in vocals and selected my key down here and previewed as I was playing the intro. This is only a dramatic reenactment as the sounds are already downloaded to my computer, of course. My goodness! But it really is as easy as just dragging it in and calling it a day. And there we have it. We're now at the point we demoed at the start of the video. As always, this isn't a full track, but there is enough material here to make one in relatively little time if you put your mind to it and expand upon the methods discussed here. We hope this video gets you started on your dubstep journey without too much hassle. Don't forget to check out the video description for a link to the demo project we made in this video and also please keep telling us what genre you'd like to see us tackle in FL Studio next in the comments. Happy music making! Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this.